All right, so I've been told I complain too much about games and people may have a point and also fuck off. But on that note, I want to talk about a game I believe is extremely underrated and that everyone should play. Welcome to CrossCode. While making this video, I noticed that this game is not exactly underrated, having 10,000 reviews on Steam being overwhelmingly positive, but if Pokemon can sell millions of copies without ever involving a QA department, I guess everything is relative. Moving on. As I said, welcome to CrossCode. An amazing indie title with fun gameplay and a narrative that does the impossible. They made a likeable French character, Hardy Har. But seriously, this game is amazing. Welcome to the newest virtual MMO, Cross Worlds. A fully interactive virtual world, but compared to similar entries in the genre like The Matrix or Sword Art Online, it distinguishes itself by the world technically existing and by not sucking complete donkey dig after half a season. Let me explain. A special programmable material has been discovered, allowing for programming of an actual game world which exists within our own, called the Playground. This material is described similar to being constructed from styrofoam, making it like a standard American residential area. Therefore, it is not suitable for direct human interaction, and players log in through an avatar made from the same material. Why are we not funding this? Another way this VR story narrative sets itself apart is, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna reference something a bit weird here. A book. Dear God. There's more. No. This specific dolled up piece of wood contains a great story, but I hate the way every game related turn is over explained to make sure that every brain dead crescent can follow along. Here the game assumes that you have had poked your head outside your comfort zone at least once in your life and we can quickly set off to enjoy the world of CrossCode. This is where we meet our protagonist, a young girl named Leah. We follow Leah on her fantasy journey through the MMO, meeting friends, raiding, losing social life, etc. But Leah is different from the other players. She's an amnesiac who is locked in as an attempt to recover her memories. But further concerning is the fact that she cannot log out. This gives an intriguing juxtaposition of two sides of the dual narrative plot. I'm relatively certain that sentence makes some sort of sense. What I mean is that the story taking place in the virtual world is basically a generic fantasy story focused on character development, while a mysterious plot about Leah's origin takes place in the real world. But this is something I cannot really go into without diving into spoiler territory. Instead, let us focus on Leah, which is, in my opinion, one of the best characters ever written. Why? Thank you for asking. Leah can't talk, which already gives her a massive one-up on Aloy in Forbidden West. But a silent protagonist is nothing new, I hear you not asking. Leah is not your classical insert-yourself fantasy Gordon Freeman type who's just too stoic and cool to waste valuable combine smashing time with nerd shit like words. Leah's a mute as a result of faulty programming. She becomes able to say simple words like hi or Leah, but other than this, all we have to go on is how she emotes. And here the character shines in the recently heavily overlooked area of show it, don't tell it. By reading Leah's body language, you develop infinitely more empathy with the character compared to some jackass standing like a deer in the head like blurting out the sad background like me to the local bartender. The emotions are displayed through a simple visual novel style dialogue with only a few words and you are always 100% aware if Leah is happy, sad, being smart or proud without ever vocalizing her feelings directly. Also, by simply changing the emphasis of how the word hi and Leah are written in the dialogue, the game can even confer humor. This is constantly on display. And at the big turning point of the story, Leah's emotions are directly felt by the player, leaving a massive pit in your stomach where you feel you've just joined Leah in the deep hole she has metaphorically ended up in. The ability to understand Leah possessed by her entourage does go a little overboard towards the end and especially in the DLC. Where they start to develop this Han solo cheery relationship where Leah will spout a single word and the others will go, why yes, that is an interesting way to theoretically achieve the quantum tunneling effect. Also, some of the story themes can feel a little cliche, like how we are forced by the path we walk in life, not by our birthright. Ha! Gay! But the game never beats you over the head with these themes or tries to pass itself off as some deep, complex narrative of the human psyche. I'm making this game sound a bit dark and dreary, but it's actually extremely happy and colorful most of the time. As I alluded to, adventuring through the virtual world with your friends is a simple, carefree and fun experience. No need for some contrived reason to be tense like being in danger outside the game or anything. This is not needed since we have the other plot in the real world. Instead, we can focus on just enjoying some good old hacky slashy type gameplay with an elemental switching skill tree which is elaborate without ever being overwhelming. Combat is based around melee bunking and dodging and switching to ranged attack by aiming with the right analog stick, making the game behave like a twin stick shooter in these situations. Quite a simple system, but highly functional and pretty damn fun. This game, however, really shines with its puzzle dungeons. Here is not only the design that's stellar, but the game constantly built on itself using the combat abilities you've obtained so far to construct increasingly elaborate puzzle designs. This continues through a long series of rooms culminating in some over elaborate construction which seems like complete nonsense to newcomers. But since the game has been grooming you slowly with the new mechanics, you rarely feel stuck or overwhelmed. Is the game perfect? <laughs> 
No. There are issues, like the game being kind of too long, running at a playtime of 30 hours, and having quite the difficulty spike towards the end, making you grind quite a lot. But these minor gripes are heavily overshadowed by all of the other fantastic design choices on display here. Weirdly, the developers seem to have been on top of my nitpegging since the DLC fixes a lot of my issues. On this note, get the bloody DLC. It's good. While the base game offers a satisfying ending, it does leave things feel a little unfinished. The DLC fixes this with an almost over-the-top happy ending where every loose thread is tied up and everyone lives happily ever after. Almost sickening. But after the journey we have been through, it was more than a suitable and a welcome conclusion, leaving with a nice fuzzy feeling. Ha! Gay! Really? Twice in one video? Lazy fucking editor. If you don't like rational and sensible behavior and decide not to get the DLC, know this. There it is a good ending. First time I didn't know this. I only figured out since a good ending is required for the DLC. Stupid. Make a poor man.